Hello folks, welcome back. Good to see you again. How y'all doing? I'm doing real tired because I woke up at 4 o'clock this morning and I've somehow got to get a video done. But here we are, we're going to get this video done and uh, see what happens. Today we're back with the JVC XUD400 Mark II combo deck. The triple CD and MD dumpster fire I started on, when was it? About a month ago? Anyhow, I got some advice on the uh, in the comments of that video on how I might be able to uh, get yonder MD deck working again, so we're going to try that today. And the reason we're going to try that today is because I got a new toy. Right there. This is my Corad KD3005 linear power supply. It's only rated for 5 amps, but uh, this is what I got to uh, help me work on the uh, Sony 666ES cassette deck to finally get that uh, all dialed in and stuff. And uh, I figured for the purposes, a linear power supply was probably going to be better suited to my needs than a switching power supply, at least for now. I might get a switcher later, but uh, yeah, for this one, I wanted my first one to be linear. So uh, we're going to use that there power supply to try and uh, get this motor to start taking off and running again. I don't know if it'll work. Part of me is very convinced that the laser pickup in the MD side of this is dead because it's got so many hours on it, but uh, we'll give it a shot. I will say that I did manage to get the entire CD side of this working, so this works now. I got all three of these button switches apart for cleaning, and they're all working. And uh, each tray ejects properly. Sometimes the little plastic insert doesn't come out with the tray, but uh, like I said, high hours. But uh, every single tray works. Play CDs just fine. It's just it's got no MD section working, so. That's really what I bought it for in the first place, is the MD section, so hopefully we can get this going today. Now one little thing before we get inside this, I've got an exciting announcement. Maybe. I don't know if you'll find it exciting, but uh, I decided to make 2025 go the same way as 2024 has, in that uh, I want to get two top-of-the-line flagship decks, and uh, whatever else I get is whatever else I get. And uh, the first of the units, which has now been lined up three months early, I might add, is one I've been after for a couple of years now. The thing is, with this deck, I was expecting to have to wait until December or January to get this one, because every time I see it come up for sale in Japan, it's been like uh, eight, nine, and one thousand bucks to get it. And that's even before shipping it here. Well, this one turned up in Canada. And not only that, but uh, after I looked at the eBay listing, yes, it was on eBay for a change. Suddenly, I logged back in. I didn't really like the price he had it set at, but I logged back in and uh, suddenly there it was. There was an offer for a $60 discount from the seller. And not only that, there was a $60 offer from eBay for a discount coupon. So, uh, you don't have to hit me in the face with a wet mop. 120 bucks discount on a top-of-the-line flagship? It's coming to me now. <laughs> so, I'm expecting that within about a week or so, and then... I don't know, we'll see. It'll be in the next multi-diagnosis video, probably at the very end. Yeah, excited to get this one, but uh, for now we gotta get into this thing. And I use the word thing with as much possible respect as I can muster for this, because uh, I don't really like it. <laughs> this was way too high mileage, but uh, I'll fire it up for you real quick and... and we'll see what it's looking like. The display is now brighter than it used to be, but it's not that much brighter. It's still doing that emergency stop thing in there. And, uh, yeah. This section now fully works. You press the button you want and the right tray comes out for a change. 
so yeah, the CD player is... Or it was fully functional. I think we just lost a belt. Oh, well, maybe not. I thought I cleaned all the switches in there, but maybe I didn't. Okay, yeah, now it's flaking out on me, just to make me look bad. But yeah, this is what sometimes happens. The uh, insert doesn't come out with the tray. No big deal. But yeah, I don't know what the deal is with this thing again. I had it working perfectly. It'll probably come back around with further use, but... Uh, yeah, there's no point trying to throw an MD in here, because it's not going to read it. It's not going to spin it up even to read it. But uh, another thing we're going to have to do once I get in there is take a look at the loading belt in there, because that's gone out now, and uh, I don't know if I've got one. So I might have to rubber renew that thing. Okay, this thing's still flaking out. Stop it. Anyway... I gotta get the anti-static stuff set up now, and then we'll get inside this and uh, see if we can do anything more for this. I have my doubts. Okay, so the MD transport is back out, and we're gonna deal with this belt first, I guess. Now that I look at it, I'm absolutely sure I don't have one to replace it, but uh, we'll get it off there. Anyhow, and see what we're dealing with. It's not too bad. It is kind of glazed. Let's measure. Okay, thickness is 0.9, so probably be going with my one millimeter belts, and internal circumference would be 20 times 2, which is 40. So let me see if I've got one, and then I'll get back to you. Well, folks, as expected, I do not have a replacement belt for this. So uh, we're going to have to go in with the rubber renew. I've got it right here. Doesn't need to be a long-term solution, just enough to uh, let us actually test this thing once I get done with it. But uh, we'll see where this goes. I should be wearing gloves or something. I can always wash my hands immediately after this. And I've checked, and I've found several other... JVC systems that use this transport, so I've got a few options if I decide I want to, uh, look how dirty that was, if I decide I want to uh, bring this thing back around, but uh, most likely I would be wanting another one of these specific decks, just so I've got something full of parts for, for this one. Or I could use this one for parts for the other, or for the next one, or whatever. I don't know. But uh, most likely I'm probably going to be cutting myself loose of this deck soon, because uh, I just don't imagine myself keeping it. And I have to say this right now, I can't believe this is the same company that made the TDV 931, because that deck is on a whole other level of build quality from this thing. And that seems to be the pattern with JVC. Either they try or they don't try. And when they don't try, you end up with stuff like this. So yeah, I might still be after another combo deck for, for listening to my MDs while I do electronics work of the type I'm doing today. We'll see. Okay, I'm gonna stop using the rubber renew right now because it stinks and it's not good for you. So I'm gonna set this off to the side somewhere, way off to the side, and we're gonna start getting into this transport again. Don't really want to, but uh, if I'm gonna get that motor restarted, I kinda have to. And I'm not going to replace the other two capacitors in there that I haven't replaced yet. 
Logic tells me I probably should, just in case I can bring this motor back around, but uh, I just don't think this motor's coming back. Well, the motor will possibly come back, but I don't think the rest of it will. One tiny screw and two tiny screws. Okay, how does this come apart again? I think for sure I'm going to have to disconnect these two. It's been a while since the last video on this machine. And yeah, that's the other thing. This ribbon cable has already lost the little blue thing that uh, holds it in place better. So I hope it still provides a connection. It should. I don't know if I've got that blue thing anymore that's supposed to go with it, but whatever. Oh, that's right. I have to disconnect the pickup in order to do anything with this little guy. I'm trying to show you what I'm doing here. And there's a significant risk anytime you disconnect the pickup of one of these things of destroying it with static electricity. That's why I've got the, uh, the strap on and the anti-static mat. Otherwise, I usually don't have to worry about static in this house. But yeah, the rest of these capacitors on here, these ones that I haven't changed yet, they all measure good, so... I'm not worried about them. What I am worried about is this here motor. So I need my soldering iron to heat up so I can disconnect the, the wires. And I need to move this over so that I can get access to a... Huh. Looking at this for the first time, I wonder if the sled is actually locked in place. I have to move it over in order to uh, get full access to uh, to the uh, spindle motor here. Otherwise, I can't spin it and I can't get the, uh, the motor to stimulate. But I think I'm going to have to grease this... Uh, this worm gear here for the uh, sled. I'm actually kind of worried about this motor as well. So we could check that one too while we're at it, maybe. Okay. Now uh, we gotta probably be easier with the uh, dental pick. We gotta disconnect yonder motor. I like that uh, they have labeled where these wires go. So that they're easier for me to deal with. And one thing I should mention, you always want to uh, make sure that when you're using a, an external power source like I will be, that your motor is not in circuit anymore. You'll remember that last time I attached a couple of component leads to these pins, and that's because it's no longer in circuit with this connector disconnected. But uh, if it had been connected and it were still in circuit, feeding power through here without disconnecting the motor first, you could easily end up blowing out the control circuit of uh, the rest of the machine. So uh, let me get my cables here and we'll try to... Uh, connect these up. Very tiny wires. And if this works, we're going to have to get access to, uh, to the uh, motor somehow in order to get some uh, oil in there. We've got an oiling port right there, but uh, yeah. Anyhow, let me fire up the, uh, the power supply. We're going to go with 1.5 volts first, and we'll see if this thing spins. And no, no spinny. That's still easier for me to get in there with a dental pick. Okay, I'm going to go up in voltage. 
2.5 volts. Come on, motor work again. 3.5 volts. This thing does not want to go again. All right, we'll keep going. Got nothing to lose. 4.5. Still no spin. This motor is toast, it seems like. I hate to just blast contact cleaner into a motor because then you ruin the, uh, the lube on them, but uh, I might end up having to do that in order to even get this thing going. Let's see, I'm fiddling with the uh, current on the power supply. I'm at one ampere. Oh, there might be something there now, actually. I'm going up in voltage again. 5.5 volts. Oh, it's doing something now. There we go, we got her. 0 0.133 amps on the power supply. It does not sound good. Ooh, and I can get a smell out of that too. I'm up to 6.5 volts. Okay, I'm going down to three volts here. And now that I've gotten that going again, we're gonna try to uh, find some way to lube that up. And then I will power it back up and we'll try and uh, get her running again. So, thanks to LT Tapehead Service for pointing this uh, very useful trick out. But yeah, you could clearly hear that this motor is not healthy. So I'm going to try to get something into uh, the rear bearing here. I don't know if that'll work. But I would want something to be inside the uh, rear bearing as well as the front bearing. So, uh... How on earth am I going to get access to the front bearing on this? Well, for one thing, I want to get this circuit board out of here because it's really interfering with my work. So I'm going to try to show this part on camera so I can figure out how to reconnect this later. And I need tweezers for this. Just a second. Okay, let's disconnect this guy so we can uh, do our work a little better. I hope I can reconnect this later. Okay, there, now I can put yonder circuit board off to the side and I can look at this and see if I can find a way to get some oil in there. And I think I can through the front slot here. This is where syringes help you. Okay, now where am I at? And uh, no, this won't work because uh, I can't get in there far enough to... Uh, get at that. Just trying to see exactly how this is put together. Oh well, it didn't work anyway, so let's go for, for it. I don't actually need to pull that uh, platter off, I don't think. All I think I really need to do is just get my syringe in there to get a drop of oil. To that front bearing. Okay, I got the top off. I think I can get in there now to feed her some oil.
Maybe. The syringe needle is a bit thick to get in there. But it's in there. Okay, oil has been applied. I'm going to try to uh, work it with my fingers here, now that I've got a little better access. You can't really see it too well, but I'm spinning the, uh, the platter by finger here. Got a little baby box elder bug crawling around on my neck. Look at this. I guess it's that time of year again. I'll deal with you later. I'm feeling charitable, so I'll let him live for a while longer. Okay, so I'll put this cover back on, and we're going to try and see if that uh, helped anything. It's a little bit difficult because it's got this little clip in the front here that has to go underneath this little metal bracket. and Yeah, fun stuff. All right, let's see how much quieter it is, if it's quieter at all. It is running right now. It is much quieter. And it's running at three volts. Let's see if it goes lower than that. Two volts. I don't know if you can see it, but it is still running. I think we might have brought this back around. I'm at four volts and it's holding a stable speed. Good! Happy this makes me. Now let me drop the voltage down to about two volts here. I want to disconnect this motor. I'll shut off the power supply real quick. I'm going to reconnect this motor to the board and I'm going to disconnect this other motor and I want to see if that works. Because I want to get some grease on there too. Just while we're at it. Okay, let me see how I can... Put these back where they go. Hard to do when your fingers are this big. All right, now we're probably gonna have to reverse polarity here, possibly. So I'm just gonna hold on to my uh, positive lead and then we'll just touch it to the uh, motor lead to see if it works. And I'm gonna power up now. Two volts. Oh yeah, that motor works. Works just fine. Let me try the other direction. All right, that should be good now. Power supply off. And now all I need to do is uh, Theoretically, you reconnect everything and put this back together and then we can see if this uh, repair worked. And I apologize if you didn't see any of that. Uh, I need to learn how to check my shot again, apparently. All right, now I gotta reinstall this belt and I'll put the thing back in the chassis and we'll see if it works. All right, so I ran into a little bit of a problem on reassembly. This one ribbon cable that lost the little blue piece I can't clamp that back down anymore. So uh, what I did was I took a piece of plastic here. See if I can show it to you. It's right on the, my finger there. And uh, I'm going to try to use that to clamp it back down. It might not be thick enough. And if it's not, I'll find another piece of plastic. But uh, basically, this is just a piece of an old uh, O-ring container from the hardware store. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to slip it in there. Go in with the ribbon cable over top, and then hopefully that'll get it working again to uh, clamp it. I need my tweezers for this. So 
So yeah, this is why I don't like dealing with these uh, FFC cables so often, because they do that on you. Okay, that does seem to be in, so I think we might be okay there. All right, folks, everything's back together, at least well enough for testing, and we're ready to see exactly what goes on with this unit now. I'm keeping my expectations very low. I don't think this will get this thing working, but at least the spindle motor in the MD section now works. So uh, I got my test disc here, and we'll just see what happens, I guess. And I've got audio connected and everything, so... Hopefully we've got something. Probably we don't. Let's find out. Switching on the transformer now. I still see emergency stop in the display. But uh, let's see what happens. It took it. See if it does anything now. Nope, nothing. I'm gonna have to trick this deck into getting rid of its emergency stop thing again, I guess. Which involves just powering it off and on with the uh, transformer enough times for it to uh, behave itself. I'm concerned by the fact that it briefly flashes MD blank disc in the display. This is not a blank disc. But I'm still getting emergency stops, so I gotta keep doing this till I uh, get it to behave. Ah, oh, come on, you little brat. Behave for me. Ah, this thing's got more problems than I would really like to deal with right now. Yeah, still having trouble with that loading belt too, it looks like. All right, it's finally in there. Still says blank disc. Nope, she doesn't want to do with that one. Let me try another one. Nope, she still can't read it. Lovely. Well, I could try and change the rest of those capacitors now since I uh, managed to actually get that spindle motor going again. Yeah, I might as well do that. Let me do that and I'll get back with you. I won't show that part on camera. Okay, folks. All remaining capacitors in the MD drive have been changed. If it don't work now, it's not going to. Let's find out. Oh, no emergency stop this time. That's somewhat promising. Let's throw something in there and see if we get anything. Oh, wait, I forgot to connect something. Something important. Like yonder ribbon cable. Our excitement may be short-lived on that one. Uh, still no emergency stop, so... Maybe we got something to happen. Nope, it tried to do something and failed. Try the other one. Yeah, this guy's too far gone, I'm gonna say. I wouldn't say I changed out all those capacitors for nothing, but uh, at least I got some practice out of this thing, and at least it's not doing the emergency stop thing anymore.
That's what I was concerned about most, but uh, I may get back in there real quick just to see if I missed anything, which is possible, but yeah, I don't know. I need to uh, actually get eyeballs on the uh, laser to see if it's actually doing anything, I think. Well, folks, I'm sorry to say this is the end of the line for this particular machine. I got back in there. I tried to uh, run the thing with the uh, top cover off. I shot segments, or so I thought. Apparently the camera wasn't recording at the time, but uh, the disc is still not spinning up, and uh, I can't get any light out of the laser. So, uh... She's toast. All the caps have been changed. I've checked all the connectors. I've looked for electrolyte damage around the circuit board. I haven't found anything. So it just looks like this thing's got way too much mileage on it. So I'm officially going to cut this loose and throw it back on the shelf. That's not a total loss. I picked up a new skill and uh, Last time I checked, that's exactly what the intention of this channel was supposed to be. It was for me to pick up new skills, learn new things, and try new stuff, and, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, this is just way too far gone. I knew this was probably going to be a mistake when I bought it, but, uh, there you go. It's a parts deck, so there's lots of stuff I can use in this thing. Transformers good. Voltage regulators. Potentiometers all that stuff, and it still plays CDs. Like, I can still use it for that, but uh, unfortunately the MD section is no longer going to work ever again, so if I want this to, side of it to work, then I've got to find a parts deck, or more than likely this would be a parts deck for something else. Anyhow, nice to know my new power supply works. We'll get back to the 666ES when in, whenever and whenever I and however, and whatever, and all that stuff when I'm ready. But uh, that day is not today, and it's probably not going to be tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, I'll get back to it when I feel like I'm comfortable enough with the uh, servo adjustments to get back to it. But, uh, yeah, I've got the power supply now, so we can get all that stuff done. Next time, I think I will try to get started on the uh, Double D99 next. I am I have to hear how that thing sounds, so... Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to start on next. And I want to hear how it sounds, and yeah, we'll get that going. Anyhow, see you in the next video. Take care.